Hey, Joe Gilder here. I recorded a friend recently who played this beautiful fingerstyle guitar part. And we didn't realize it at the time, but when I went back to listen and to mix the song, I noticed there was a lot of squeak when he would slide his fingers on the frets. He was doing a lot of bar chords and playing up and down the neck. And in the moment while we were recording, I didn't notice. But once I added a little EQ, took out some low mids and made it a little bit clearer, it began to stand out. And I want to show you how to deal with it. It's not as big of a deal as you might think, and there are a couple of ways we can fix that problem inside of Studio One. Obviously, the ultimate solution is to figure out how to play without that squeak happening. Sometimes it's possible. Sometimes you're just moving a lot, and it just happens. But let me, let me play what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everything else feels delightful, but those squeaks. So it's going to be different for every guitar it, guitarist and every recording, but these squeaks are pretty prominent. We can see them right there in the waveform. And the first way I would try to approach this, normally when I think when I have this problem, I'll use a de-esser to solve it because a de-esser takes out S's that are too loud in a vocal, and a squeak is a lot like an S. So we'll pull up the built-in de in Studio One. Let's listen to it, and let's find where the squeak is happening first. Okay, it's pretty low in the frequency range. Let's see if this works. I'm, I'm worried it might not work, but we gotta try it. That actually works pretty well. And if we go with the wider approach, it's probably gonna cut more frequencies is my guess, which might be appropriate here because it's starting, typically a DS or you're working at like 6K and above. We're a lot lower here, let's see. Yeah, okay, I think that actually can work. When I pulled it down a little bit lower, it started just turning down whenever he plays the guitar. So I don't want that. I only want it to kick in when the squeaks happen. That works just fine. Now, if you tried that and couldn't get the result that you wanted, here's another thing we can try. Let me turn that off. Another option, this is very manual, but if it's only happening in like one or two spots in the song, this might be the fastest solution. Right click on the bottom half of the audio and select this box, Gain Envelope. This gives you a horizontal line that looks a lot like an automation lane. This just allows me to basically change the volume of the underlying audio itself. I'm gonna press N to get out of grid mode, or snap to grid, and then I just select the two here and just pull it down. So I'm literally changing the waveform one at a time. That sounds a little fake. We could maybe like, oops, we could maybe try to like ramp into it. Something like that. That's actually not bad. Let's try this one over here. That's a big one. I'm afraid this one's gonna sound awkward. So you can see where the lines get squiggly is where it's happening. And let's just pull that down until it's about the size of the other blobs. Better, more. That's not bad, that can work. So that's the other solution. Use clip gain envelopes to do that. And it's better than volume automation because now we can still go move our volume fader in the mix without it being locked into a specific volume. You could technically use volume automation for this, but I don't think it's worth it. Um, okay, here's a big one. That one had like a... Okay, so you can see him coming through here. So uh, the third way, and this is actually, I think the way that I solved it on mine, I tried the de -esser on this guitar and it, it fixed it, but it felt like the squeak was happening across the entire frequency range. And so then looking at the waveform and listening to it, the squeak is louder than everything else. So I thought, well, shoot, I'm just going to use a really aggressive compressor, almost like a limiter, to where it's only kicking in when, those, when the squeaks happen. So we go all the way up with the ratio because we're treating it like a limiter. Attack is one millisecond. Release can be maybe 20 or so. And then we're just going to lower the threshold until it's only responding when the squeaks happen and it's not responding any other time. So we can go down to probably like here. 
that's too low. That's too. That's getting the guitar. <laughs> Even that wasn't wasn't good. Let's uh, let's try a little bit lower. The other thing you can do: side chain this. So we're gonna listen to just the higher frequencies, and so it's not responding to any bass frequencies, but it's gonna compress the entire frequency range. That's I think was the solution I needed. So now, before before turning on that side chain, every time he played the bass note, boom, boom, that was loud and had a lot of energy because it's bass, and that was causing the compressor to say, oh, compress, oh, compress. So we just told the compressor, ignore everything below 550 hertz, but when a squeak comes through, compress everything evenly. So it's basically turning the entire guitar down. That works a lot better. Now, you may be annoyed by it. One key thing, by the way, when you're dealing with stuff like this, first, make sure it's an actual problem that you can hear in the mix. If not, don't waste your time solving it. But then, sometimes it is an actual problem, like it was in this song, and I feel like this solution is pretty elegant and it works pretty well. That can work. Now, for the extra big ones like that, maybe you do a combination where I've done the compressor, but I'm going to actually turn that one down also. That may or may not help. I don't know if it helped there. But those are three ways to deal with squeaks or any other annoying little thing that happens in your audio. Know how to use these simple tools, and you can solve most problems that you come up against. My name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.